stars go out each night. Remind us where you are. Remind us where you are. Let this be our prayer. Let this be our prayer. When we lose a way. says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. God has been very good to this house. This year has been declared our year of what? Rising. And men have be begun to rise. Amen. Last Sunday was very prophetic. Um, that was uh, pastor went on another tangent of the prophetic and he made a lot of prophetic declarations. Uh, in the course of the service. And there are testimonies already coming up. Yours will be next. Amen. If you clap louder, yours will be next. Amen. Hallelujah. I know there are some of us seated there that have testimonies. You can meet any of the pastors. We can filter your testimonies so that you can testify to the glory of the Lord. Praise God. As you testify, you endorse the blessing that the Lord has added to you. Amen. Praise God. Um, to take us further in the course of the service, let's receive Minister Prince 
for his testimony. Put your hands together for him. And uh, Miss Dorcas, if she's around, she can come up to the stage. Clap for him as he comes. Hello. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Please clap for Jesus, I beg. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Don't stop, don't stop. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I don't always come upstairs to give testimony. It's not as if there, there's no testimonial, but this one is very, very, uh, very, very, um, how will I say it? Mind blowing. Um, it's just simple. I'll make it short. On Monday morning, I got a call from Abuja from Open University that uh, I finally graduated. <laughs> <laughs> After 11 years of being in school, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I got admission 2012. I was still in church here, and uh, I graduated officially 2016 or 2017, and uh, since then it has been hell. From one exam to another, from one stress to another, project and everything. At the time, I even gave up. I was like, I can't do this school again. Let me just look for something else to do. But... Uh, I held on to hope, and I held on to the word of God. There is no year that passed that I don't write exam. Every year, I must write exam. My money was going. I can't do exam now. Every year, I must prepare to write exam. Even, even some weeks to my wedding, I was still writing exams. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when I go to school last year, I was like, okay, let me see what I'm having. They showed me the last six courses that I'm supposed to do. I said, okay, I'll do it. They said, can you do it? You're getting married. I said, let me do everything, at least. Even if now one I still won't write this year, I'll call right. Of which there was one I was supposed to write this year too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So can I say I was already used to the whole system, but I I I, I had my hope on God that something will happen one day, and uh, it has all been miracles since I got married. Praise the Lord. Yes, doors have been opening. I think I and my family will bought our first land. You know, immediately after marriage, it has been God. And just on Monday morning, I got a call from Abuja and were like, eh. Hey, Mr. Prince, your name is out. You've graduated. I was crying all through. <laughs> and my wife, we are just crying and rolling on the floor because she knows the whole story too. So I just want to give God praise. And I just want to use myself as a point of contact to any of you here that is holding on to God for something. Yours will come in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Sam. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, Pastor Peter. Um, last week, Sunday, there was a prophecy that went on during the course of the service, that we are going to receive a package that it might come in form of looking for your brother. It came on jokingly, like, you people like quarrel, Pastor was saying it, and a lot of us laughed. Pastor also said that some of you, it will start immediately, you get out of the gate. And on Sunday after service, I just went out, waiting for a tri uh, commercial tricycle to get back to my destination. Lo and behold, I met my brother who I have not seen for 10 years. Yeah. And he said that we will meet, we will talk, and when we were talking, he said something. He said, uh, it's, your, it's, it's blood that brought, that made me come through that road. I said, no, it is prophecy that brought you. My God. I told him, it's prophecy that brought you. I just want to thank God. It has been from glory to glory. And since then, we had a relationship. When I told others that I am talking with this by our brother, they didn't believe it. They say, how? He's a very busy person. I understand his schedules now. We met two days ago. We've been meeting all this while. And he's trying to explain, I have a tight schedule, but you know, you're my sister. I don't know why. I can't let you go. I know when I shared the testimony on Sunday, because Pastor said we should come back. If you have such experience, come back and share the testimony. I shared it with Pastor Peter. He said I should say it. And Pastor made a prophecy that it should be from a good relationship to another. And it has been that way. And he's trying to reach out to others through me. I just want to give God the glory. It can only be God. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate God for that testimony. Yours will be next in Jesus' name. Yours will be next in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We have a wedding this morning. Uh, I want to 
can you can clap if you want to. I want to receive the family of Duchess and Emmanuel. Are they here? Let me see your hand up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, they are all scattered in the congregation. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Let's listen up to this welcome chart. The marriage union is the closest relationship that can exist between two human beings. When a man and a woman decide to be joined together in marriage, they should do so with full realization of their responsibilities because marriage is serious business. When two born-again believers know it is God's will for them to marry, they come together before God, before a minister, and before public profession of their mutual love and devotion, pronouncing vows and pledging their lives to each other. As they pronounce the marriage vows in faith, the power of God goes into operation and a miracle takes place. They are united by God and become as one in his sight. Their union is threefold. They are joined legally, but it is a miraculous union. Therefore, as you go through the, this ceremony, Emmanuel and Duchess, I add my faith to yours in believing God for a life of love and harmony in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. At this juncture, I want to know who is giving the bride in marriage. Good morning, sir. Good morning. God bless you. How are you? Thank you. Yeah. Please, sir, what's your relationship with Duchess? She's my second daughter. Let's appreciate him. Do you know the young man seated beside him? Yes. Who is this, sir? Emmanuel, my in-law. Good. Now, I want to find out if he has fulfilled all the traditional rights that yes. qualifies him to take the hand of your daughter in marriage. Before he said it, he has already fulfilled it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now I need you to step forward, sir, and take the hand of your daughter. And hand her over to me. You are handing her over to God. And in the course of the service, we would hand her over to her husband. Thank you, sir. You may go back to your seat. You may see. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. All right. This charge is to the groom and to the bride. The word has the idea that marriage is only that spoken according to the word of God. The power of God goes into operation. There is an actual miracle that takes place when your faith is released in God's power. God honors your faith. And brings you into union together. Hallelujah. While we're not in doubt of your mutual love together and the agreement you have to be married, man and wife, the Bible also tells us can two work together except they agree. So we want to be sure if your faith does agree, praise God. Please extend the microphone to the Groom. So we want to take a profession of faith. We don't join a Muslim to a Christian or a pagan to a Christian. So we want to know, Mr. Emmanuel, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Can you celebrate that? And have you also received the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you? Yes, I have. All right, church, that's the best decision anyone can make. Now to the bride. Duchess, you look beautiful. Thank you. Duchess, have you received Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, I have. Sorry, we didn't hear that. Yes, I have. And have you also received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah. Please, let's celebrate her. For the forderance of the service, let's receive with Jesus joy. I mean with Jesus joy. Can you put your hands together? The groom for the first Bible reading. Please don't stop clapping till he gets here. Come on, you can do better than that. Church, praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Amen. The first Bible reading is taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33, and I read, Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing, but cleansing her by the washing with water through the world and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Sisters, you have to take this one personal. Let's receive with Jesus joy. Come on, I said with Jesus joy. This beautiful bride this morning for the second Bible reading. You know you will do that class that club for some time. Her department people are not here, so let's support her. She belongs with the RFF. Masterpiece, can you help this church this morning? Thank you. Media, can you help this church this morning? <laughs> Single sisters, can you help the church this morning? Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Please don't mind my voice. I pray that God will give me the strength to read this. Seriously, I'm tensed. Second reading. It's taken from the Bible book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. It says, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelries or fine clothes. Rather, 
It should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to adorn them themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord, Jehovah. God is my Lord, though. You are her daughters. If you do what is right and do not give way to fear, are you my daddy? It's a question, I want to know. The Bible says you are my father. Eh? Are you my daddy? Husband, are you my daddy? Okay, oh. Okay, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and be humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. <clears throat> because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Church, please put your hands together and receive with me a father in the Lord, the senior pastor. Pastor Kosfini Udoka. Come on, make it louder, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. Please, you may be seated, congregation. All right. Um, I'm starting with you, Groom. All right, Emmanuel, Annie, do you take daughters as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her and care for her for the rest of your lives? Yes, I do. I, Ani, Imano Chukwebuka. According to the word of God. According to the word of the Lord. Leave my father and my leave mother. Leave my father and my mother. And join myself to you. And join myself to you. To be a husband to you. To be a husband to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. Amen. Amen. All 
All right, Duchess, do you take Emmanuel Annie as your husband? Submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your lives. Yes, I will. Uh, you were arguing it when you were reading it. <laughs> if it's not late yet, if you're not ready to submit unto him as the Lord, you walk down. We we'll look for another sister. You walk down. He's your Lord. <laughs> Whether you like it or yes, he's your Lord. Amen. All right. Having heard, yes, you do. Um, I need you to say this after me. I Dorches Dorcas Minichikumukuzi. According to the word of God. According to the word of the Lord. Will submit myself to you. Submit myself to you. To be your wife. To be your wife. For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. From this moment forward. From this moment forward, we shall be one. We shall be one. All right, can I have the ring, please? Thank you. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we present this ring before you this morning. A token of love, a token of commitment, a sign of the vows that is being exchanged at this moment. Father, we cover the rings with the blood of Jesus Christ, and we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that this ring will not be a reminder of bondage, will not be a reminder of heartache, it will not be a reminder of regret, but it will be a reminder of love, a reminder of the vows which they exchanged, a reminder of the great things that is ahead of this, the both of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that they will have no reason to pull off this ring in pain. That the moment that this ring gets out of their fingers is the moment when a better one comes in in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father, for we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. This is who? Okay, that for you. Okay. So, Emmanuel, you're going to call uh, Duchess, that I know, that's Duchess, um, the name that you would desire to call her from today forward. If you want to still repeat the word the Duchess, you can go ahead and repeat the word Duchess, whatever you want to call her from this moment, go ahead and call her. Didi. You said what? Didi. Okay, so explain to the congregation so they will know. Okay, her name is Dockers and Duchess, and I love both of them, so oh, okay. I call it Didi. Didi, okay. Yes. All right, so hold her left hand and raise it up a little bit. Okay, she's already in the for him. Now say that again. Didi. With this ring. With this ring. I the word. I the word. I give it to you today. I give it to you today. As a token of my faith. As a token of my faith. And I believe with all my heart. Okay. And I believe with all my heart. And I believe with all my heart. That this is forever. That this is forever. It is my love. Is my love. My faith. My faith. That I release. That I release. Right now. Right now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. All right, Duchess. Since you are DD, maybe AA, I don't know. All right, just hold the left hand and then hold his left hand and um, lift it up. And uh, call, her, call him whatever you want to start calling from today. I, I, I didn't say you guys should hug. It's enough. Yes. <coughs> Obim. What? Obim. Obim, okay. Um, for those who don't understand Igbo, Obim means um, my heart, all right, which can be taken for my love, whatever. Okay, so go ahead. Obim. With this ring. With this ring. I'll do it. i do it. I give it to you today. I give it to you today. As a token of my faith. As a token of my faith. And I believe with all my heart. And I believe with all my heart. That this is forever. That this is forever. It is my love. It is my love. My faith. My faith. That I release right now. That I release right now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. At, at this moment, I will want the the both the both parents to come up to the pulpit, the father and mother of the bride, the father and mother of the groom, come up to the pulpit. Please help the help the women come up the stairs. We are still working on it. Right, um, we are lacking the mother and father of uh, Emmanuel. So, Pastor J, please come. And Pastor uh, Mrs. J, come also, and stand in for the parents. All right. So, the, basically, what we are doing this morning is that we are going to give you, the father, the privilege to bless them, and then uh, Pastor J, who is the head of the married couple in church will also do that on behalf of his own parents. Um, then we continue. Please give him the mic. Church, let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we appreciate you. I honor you for a time like this. I bless you for this ample opportunity you're giving to my daughter to get married. Lord, their marriage is in your hand. Mm. You are the only one who has power over everything. Mm. This was instituted in your presence, mm. and your presence will continue to be with them. Amen. I decree by the authority of heaven that you will not lack any good thing. Amen. The peace of God will reign. The love of God will reign. The glory of God will fill your heart. Amen. You will not... Depart God after marrying. Amen. You will worship God with the whole of your heart. Amen. You will be more concentrated than ever Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You'll be more committed to the things of God than Amen. ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hear good news concerning how you are working with God Amen. and how God is working with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I decree no enchantment, no sorcery, no divination against you, no invocation against your life. You are safe and secured in the whole hands of the Almighty Amen. God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you serve the Lord in this place, as they wed you in this place, this place is your home. It shall be a wonderful home that you maintain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No evil eyes shall be tied you. The marriage shall be fruitful. You want twins, you get twins. Anything you want, you get. Because you are in a place where you get the best. You will get Amen. the best in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I give you all that praise and glory. Thank you, Thank you mighty Father. Thank the victorious you. right hand of righteousness is upon you. Amen. To do exploit for God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
I incubate you with the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, wonderful Father. Amen. I appreciate you because I know you are in for good things in your life. Amen. The people who use them as good examples, say, those people who are married, you are doing marvelously in their life. Mm. And it shall be so. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But I will thank you for this beautiful couple that have come up today to consummate, Lord, this marriage. This last phase, oh God, Father, of this process, we commit them into your hands. Yes, Jesus. Father, Lord, it is with divine understanding, Lord, that they have comfort to do this today. Yes, Therefore, we pray and we ask that God Almighty, upon this altar where they kneel on, this altar that is known for speed, you will experience speed hereafter in Jesus Christ's Amen. name. This altar is known for excellence. Excellence shall surround you. All that you shall do after now, you will experience God's own excellence Amen. in Jesus Christ's name. This altar is known for increase. You will continue to increase hereafter Amen. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, we pray and we ask today that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because you have come together today, yet again, we ask as one, you will chase a thousand. But you've come, you've come as two, you will chase a multiples in the name of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. You will go forth, therefore, to increase, to multiply, to subdue, to replenish in all things and in all areas of your life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. No one has come upon this altar to marry and left this place not being productive you will multiply as much as you so desire Amen. in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And we pray, we ask that for our sister here, whose parents are standing here witnessing this wonderful marriage consummation, we ask the Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus, for all the children that will come from you, so shall you stand to experience their marriages in the name of our Lord Jesus. When your children want to celebrate, they will not go looking out for you. You'll be there real and direct, in good health. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall you stand to witness the joy of your family? In Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. For I know my servant Abraham, that he will bring his children according to my will. Here is Emmanuel and daughters, they have come before a holy altar in faith, even as we pray, that this marriage will be blissful in the name of Jesus. Amen. It will be an exemplary marriage, even in these challenging times, O oh God. It will not be said concerning them that this marriage encountered any form of divorce. They will not encounter any form of separation. Uh, they will not live uh, like cat and dog. Uh, they will live in harmony. Uh, they will live in peace. Above all, they will be your representatives, even as couples in the name of Jesus. Through them, men and women will come to know Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, oh God, uh, the same white garment which she's wearing today, she will not miss that white garment that is about to come on that rapture morning. They won't miss heaven, oh God. Marriage won't cost them heaven, but marriage will make them to gain heaven. We cover them and their seats with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father, because we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At least you can go back, you can stand. Mama, leave them. The, the, the husband is able. <coughs> Praise God. This one is able. When you go to get a car, you, you make your choice. Amen. She'll she, she buy a keke. I mean, you can tow the keke home if it's spoils on the road. Amen? Father will bless this communion, being the first thing they are eating together. Father will bless it this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father will pray even as they eat 
that what is not found in the blood of Jesus will not be found in their blood. What is not found in the body of Christ will not be found in their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus they are about to take via communion, O oh God, terminate every form of ancestral cord that is negative to the both lineages in the name of Jesus. Let it initiate the blood of the new covenant, initiate, solidify this covenant of marriage which they are getting into this morning. Thank you, blessed Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That's enough, my friend. That's enough. There are things done in the private, some in the open. I say, do as the Holy Spirit leads you. So that's what Holy Spirit is leading you to. You guys should go down. What is that? Do as the Holy Spirit lead you. I don't know the kind of generation we have these days. Praise God. Don't mind me. Enjoy yourselves. That's that's what um, that's the gift God has given to you. Amen. All right. This morning we are getting into the Word of God, and <clears throat> by the grace of God, up at nine a.m. And by the grace of God, I will start um, the business empowerment service and my relationship service in the first service. First service, I will alternate the business empowerment and relationship. Business empowerment this Sunday, that Sunday, on, that's how it's going to be. But second service is fully a normal service. Normal not because it's, um, we make light of the normal, but you know what I mean. All right, so... If you desire to wed within this month, within this year, sorry, make sure you go to church office and pick up your marriage form, fill it, return it back, and start the class with them by this month, by Friday already. Okay. So, Sith Interactive Variety holds today. Sith Interactive Variety holds today. So, seat is today by 5 p.m. in our various seat centers. Feel free to be part of seats because without being part of seats, you are not a member of House on the Rock. Okay. Um, the wedding today has been concluded already. Dolce's and Emmanuel, we already received our testimony. We have the legal people already here. All right. Let's um, open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs 21. <coughs> Verse Proverbs eighteen twenty one, Matthew nine twenty one, Luke twenty three forty two, Luke fifteen seventeen, uh, Genesis one twenty one, Genesis eleven seven. Very good Bible study for people that haven't read their Bible this week. So I'll call it again. Proverbs 18, 21, Matthew concert. We're going to read everything together. Let's read together. One, two, go. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in in the power of the tongue. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. What it means is that your tongue has what? Has what? Uh, 
let's, let's be talking. Death and life are powerful when tongue gives them power. So as long as your tongue does not empower them, they are not powerful. Where the power lies is in the tongue. So if you want to die, you can die quicker than a poison when you begin to speak death. If you want to live, you will live first by the things you say. Death and life are dependent. Can we see this from a message Bible so we can understand a little bit more? When we finish reading all the scriptures, the message is gone. Message Bible. All right, it says, words, words kill. kill, words give life. They either poison or you choose. Tell your neighbor, choose. You say, words does what? Kills. Words give life. So is your choice to choose to live or choose to die? Okay, let's read the other part. Matthew 9.21. Let's go together, one to go. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Who did she say to? Herself. Did she say it to anybody? She said within herself. She didn't say it to nobody. If only I may but touch. Do you know the story, isn't it? Sorry, of who? The woman with the issue of blood. The life of an animal is where? But there is something that is greater than what is in the blood. He, she was held down for 12 years. As long as her mouth was closed, she was held down for 12 years. But the day she said within herself, this year I will make it, she began to rise. The day she said this year I will get married, she got married. The year she said this year I will rise, she rose. She said within her, let me tell you, you can't rise above your words. Not about anybody, but about yourself. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Did she get her result? Yes. Clearly. Let's move again to the next scriptures. Luke 23, 42. Luke 23, 42. All right, let's go together. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You know that? Lord, remember me when thou comest into your kingdom. Luke 15, 17 to 18. Okay, one, two, go. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Let's see that 17 again. And he did what? He came to himself. He sat himself down and began to have discussion with himself. He didn't discuss with anybody. He said, hey, prodigal child, sit here. Have you ever come to the point where you sit yourself down and talk to yourself? And he sat himself down. He had a discussion. From the moment he had a discussion with himself, his freedom came. Today, your freedom will come. <laughs> That a man is very epileptic. Yeah. 
Genesis 1, 26. Uh, do you still need us to project that? It's something that we should all know by heart. But for the sake of people who are new to the kingdom, let's read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now let me say this to you. And the Lord said, or God said, make man. In other words, he spoke to himself. Let me bring about solution to the earth. Let me make man in my image and after my likeness. He spoke to himself. Now look at Genesis 11 verse 7 said the same thing. Genesis 11 verse 7. Bible students, you already know that's the Tower of Babel. The Bible says that God said what? Go to. Let, let us, us go down. And there confound their language. Yes. That they may not understand one another's speech. God again spoke to himself. Let us go down. Let's go down and see what these people are doing. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness this morning. Thank you for the privilege of the word of God. Thank you for having the privilege to hear what we are about to hear this morning. For many are in some environments in this world and they desire to hear the word of God yet cannot hear. But you have given us this privilege to sit under a cool atmosphere to hear the word of life, which is the word of truth. Lord, as we begin to speak the word of God by your spirit this morning, let freedom, let deliverance come in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We arrest every negative spirit in the atmosphere. We speak to them to be quiet in the name of Jesus. Let everything that has been troubling your mind be quiet in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right, help me tell your neighbor speaking like God. I, I will want to take that for my, the topic of my dissertation this morning, speaking like God. Speaking like God. You know, the truth is that if you read the Bible properly as a Bible student or a religious mind, you will first of all think that from the moment life began to exist, we saw faith in God. When the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, uh, that the Bible says that the, heaven, uh, the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Lord, who couldn't even understand, so to speak, what was happening in the face of the deep, in the face of chaos, spoke into chaos. And everything that was chaotic in his sight began to take shape. That was faith. Faith is in our words. When God created human being, he implanted into us faith. Romans chapter 10 says that the word of God is near thee even where? Uh, why are you speaking low? In case you miss it. No, say it loud. Even in your mouth. He said the word of God is near thee. Even in your mouth. The Bible wasn't just talking about the word of God. Because at the time the Bible was speaking in Romans, it was still more or less a conversation amongst the early church. But the Bible was trying to say to them, explain to them, put to emphasize on the power of what they carry in their tongue. 
The Bible says that the power of life and death is tied to the tongue. And whoever loves it. In other words, when you speak death, you spoke death because you love death. It's not about what you think or feel. It's about what you say. So if you want to live, you speak life. If you want to die, you speak death. The power of life and death is here. Many have been destroyed because of what they said. Many have believed it because of what they said. Let me say this to you. According to research, it is said, and parents, please hear me. It's, the research says that a child that the parents kept saying from time to time that you are a nice child, you are smart, you are intelligent, I am proud of you. They do better in school than the one you never told that. Stupid boy. I don't know about you, but I was among those that received the other part of it. Stupid boy. And there's no need of bringing your result. I know you will fail. <laughs> and while you're bringing the result, slab follows it. And when they open it, indeed, <laughs> you failed. Because they have spoken failure into your life that you have become failure automatically. So the more you speak life, I am speaking because of what is going to happen this year. This year, many will rise. Yeah. Uh, but many will rise above others. Yeah. Many will rise above others. Not because they are more skilled than the others, but because they have learned the act of speaking to themselves. Learn to speak to yourself this year. It's, uh, 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 rising is not a cliche. It's a destination. It's where you are meant to be by the end of this year. And rising doesn't have a limit to it. This year, I will rise. This year, in every area of your life that you desire to rise, begin to speak that into existence. If your body hears it long enough, you will become it. It's not something, it's not a magic. It's the way you are created. It's the way you are configured. Now, I'll tell you a story as we begin to run. Even, even, even in the psychological world, an experiment was carried out by a basketball team. I've told the story before in church where a basketball team, they needed to know how powerful words are. For some of you also who go to clubs, even though I know they are not here, amen. Clubbers are not here. This is a church. But if you have experienced that in the other life, you know, you understand that hype men will make you drop your last card and go home trekking. When a hype man, people go to club and come out owing. And they'll collect your number, collect sometimes you drop your car. If they are used to you, they will leave you to go knowing that you will pay. Because there's one hype man somewhere hyping you and you are feeling above. So what am I saying? Words are powerful. So there's this basketball team, both teams, both teams. After playing basketball match, they needed to test how powerful words are. And then they called one of the basketball team to the side and told them that we are going to quarantine you guys. In other words, we are going to put you in an exclusive place. And they said, why? They said, because the other team you played with, they had virus and we didn't notice it early. And this virus is such that in the next seven days, you are likely going to, some of you will stop talking, some of you will go cripple, some of you will start running fever because of the virus. But we are going to keep you in an isolated place and doctors will be coming there to see you. 
And then they isolated the other people again and told them their own story. The story have it that, or the experiment have it that, three days after they heard that word, some of them couldn't walk again. Some of them couldn't walk again. You know basketballers, how tall? I, I, I can't play basketball. I'm short amongst them. They are tall, huge. Suddenly, because the word has been spoken into them, all of them, oh, virus, virus, so I have virus. I have virus, so this is how I'm going to die. I have virus. Let me tell you, the whole system, their immunity, everything started going down. Seven days, some of them were already on wheelchair. On the seventh day, the guy who is carrying out the experiment came into the hall again and told them that the first boyfriend said your head is big. So do a particular hairstyle to cover the big head. Let me tell you, what people say to you really doesn't leave you. After saying ugly, you start analyzing the ugly. Am I really ugly? Am I fat? You look at the mirror, say, child, it is true. I'm fat. I'm ugly. And before you know it, your self-esteem will drop. And then you will see yourself saying yes to Tom, Dick, and Harry. Because anybody that says hi to you becomes a celebrity. Because how can you appreciate a woman like me who is ugly, as said by my former boyfriend? But I'm here to tell you that stop listening to what people say to you. Oh, by that I mean don't take it to heart anymore. People will always say things that they want to say. In fact, people intentionally say things to put you down. You will not amount to anything. You say, really? Maybe he has really analyzed my life. Oh. May I let you know that this man standing here is a testimony. I grew up in an environment where nobody, nobody, not my father, not my mother believed in me. Everybody saw me as a failure. They knew I was going to fail. But let me tell you what happened. Within me, I knew I was going to succeed. There is nobody that is close to Pastor Crosfini from child up until now that is surprised at the level at which God is using me. None. Most of them will always say, you see this thing he's doing, or he's saying, he has been saying it long before now. Because when you finish talking to me, I will go and talk to myself. I was, if you encounter me, one thing you will notice is that this man is full of himself. No apologies, I'm full of myself. Be full of yourself. If you want to be half of yourself, it's your business. But you see me, I am full of myself. Because if I allow you, you will empty me. I am full of myself. I know where I am going in life. Unbelievers make it without God. By that I mean without seed, without tithe, without that, without the other. But they believe within themselves that this guy, you go make him. And we are teaching believers how to equip themselves through the world. The highest thing you will do to yourself this, way, this year is to learn to speak good of yourself. I am not talking about positive confession that most of you do. You know, when you stand in the mirror, you say, you're beautiful, your shape is nice. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about coming to the in terms with yourself. Coming to terms with yourself. Because there are two different things. Some of you say, God forbid, God forbid, I, not, I, I will not fail in Jesus' name. That's not what I'm talking about. I never confronted anybody that told me I will fail. Never confronted anybody that told me negative things. But I confronted myself that that thing he's saying cannot work. It is not possible. I remember having a confrontation with somebody, a member of Groomer, is it Groomer Haraji? Yeah, okay. 
And the guy, we had an open confrontation because I was in evangelism. And the guy looked at me and said, you would not amount to anything on the road. I looked at him and said, I will bury you with my money. Four years later, I saw him. He didn't amount to anything. I have stepped up from where he met me. I said, so who did it amount to anything? So what I'm saying it is that you must learn this year to speak good of yourself. Speak good of yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no, life won't believe in you. Uh, you know, there are some things you teach, you look like, let me tell you. What life, what, res, what life responds to is the energy that you emit. Have you ever had a friend that every time is having a problem? Two of you at the bus stop. Bike came and knocked him or her down. The next day, he or she went out again and one madman poured water on her. Have you had such friends? There is an energy they emit that attracts evil. He will soon break my heart. Broken. I know the guy won't marry me. He's just using me. He won't marry you. You must learn to speak good of yourself and believe in what you have spoken concerning yourself. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says that those who love it those who love it, they will do what? They will eat the fruit thereof. And let me tell you something about fruit. Fruit is something that comes seasonally. Fruit is not seed. But there is seed in every fruit. So you will eat it in this season. Eat it in another season. You eat in the other season. You will keep eating as long as you keep speaking. Praise God. So learn to speak well about yourself. Learn to believe in yourself. The idiot your husband called you is not what pained you. The, what pained you is that you went home and analyzed the idiot. You were a fool that your friend called you didn't pain you. What pained you is that you went home to ponder on it. And when you ponder on it, you will encounter a more powerful instrument, which is your tongue. And then you stop. To, because if any fool, remember what CNC taught here. If any fool tells you on the road you're a fool, you don't even pay attention. So it's about the bull. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I'm talking about the, the, the topic. We had a woman who had suffered from the issue of blood for 12 years. And one day, the Bible says, according to um, where we read, that doctors have eaten all her money. He had, she had no money anymore. And she doesn't have any other thing to do. And one day, she sat herself down and said to herself, from this day, I am going to go and meet Jesus. I know I wouldn't have an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. But what I would do is that I will try as much as I can to touch the hem of his garment. For I know if I succeed in touching the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Let me tell you, before now, there was no reference to that encounter. There was no story about anybody who touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Nothing like that. No precedent. No antecedent. Like that before. But the woman said that in her heart, I am going to do this and I will be healed. And by the time she struggled into the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and got healed, Jesus said, somebody touched me. Peter said, we have been touching you. Are you okay? He said, no. Somebody had a conference within herself and touched me with an intention. How do you know? Because virtue left me. There is something in me that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for who he went to. Virtue left. Who touched me? 
Peter said, I've been touching you. He said, not you. Judas said, I've been trying to even point to the people that will buy you very soon. Uh, they were all talking, and the woman kept quiet. He said, not you, not you. Who will touch me? The woman with the face down said, I, Lord. He said, daughter, what is it? He said, for 12 years, I've been battling with issue of blood, but immediately I touched you. I felt dryness in the inside of me. I got healed. The woman didn't quote the Bible. There is no scripture that said that if you touch the hem of his garment, you'll be healed. What she did was that she came to herself, spoke with herself, and took a journey of faith by the things she said within herself. And she was healed. Is it wrong to quote the Bible? No. But the Bible that you haven't spoken to yourself will never work. It won't work. After all, it won't work. The woman got healing. If you also read the other place where we read, you will understand about a particular young man who they called the blind Bartimaeus, who was born blind, who was begging by the uh, gate of Jericho. And Jesus went into Jericho. As he was coming out, the guy was crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He was among every other impotent folk. He was among the blind. He was among the lame. He was among the sick people, but he was the only one who spoke to himself. He hadn't seen Christ before, but he has heard about him before. But he said to himself, if only I may cry out. Did he say who quote scripture? He said, if I can only cry out for mercy, I will see. Immediately Jesus came to him and said, what do I do for you? He said, that I may see. Why? He has spoken to himself to the point that he believed. That if this man prays for me, I'll be, I'll be, healed. I'll be healed. And then he said, okay, it's done. And the man's eyes popped open because he spoke to himself. But there were people around him, his folks, who were telling him to stop. He won't see you. He won't notice you. People were speaking negativity into his life, but his own voice superimposed on all the voices. So he kept crying. People were beating him down, but he was still shouting. What he was saying is out of personal conviction. And that was it. No scripture. The man didn't say Jeremiah 34 verse 59. Says that if only you may touch my eyes, I will say No. Is if I, if I call on him, I will, I, I'm sure. And it ha happened. What exactly do you desire this year? Begin to speak it into reality. Speak it into reality. As you begin to speak it, one of the things you must know is that the woman who spoke, spoke to him herself in her house and took a journey. It's about it is what you do after you have spoken. I'll give you another example. Jesus was crucified in pain on the cross of Calvary. He was in pain. He was crying, but on the right and left was, were thieves. And he was crying, bleeding. You know, the only thing the Bible would tell us is what he said in the cross of Calvary, you know. Uh, it is finished, God forgive them for they don't know what they are saying. He was a human being, he was crying. <laughs> Jesus was crying. He was human. So the other thief decided to make a mockery of him or stay him into anger. So peradventure he would get angry and make all of them come down from the cross. He said, if you are really the son of man, <laughs> do something now. Now was in your crusade. When I came to steal, I saw the magic you did. Do something here. And Jesus looked at him, kept quiet, and was kept crying. What did the other thief do? He said, remember me in your paradise. He didn't say, forgive me. 
Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be what? Saved. He didn't follow the biblical principles upon which one can be saved. He only said, Jesus, remember me in your paradise. In his mind, he knew that if I say this, inside what I have said, there are too many things inside it. And Jesus said to him, not tomorrow. He said today, the one I'm looking at you, you're half dead. I am already going there too. I will be with you in paradise. I will be with you. Because a man spoke to himself on the cross and said, Kai, why is this guy, my colleague, talking to this man like this? No, 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 no. I know what to do. Remember me in your paradise. Let me tell you, you must come to that conclusion in your life where you begin to say things to yourself as you desire them to manifest. You must come to that level of your life where you will sit yourself down and tell yourself, see, this year, I will be on the topmost top of my, my career and nothing will stop it. You see, this year, my hands will touch money. You see, this year, that visa will be granted. You see, this year, that rent will be paid with ease. You must learn to speak to yourself and believe in what you have spoken. And the essence of belief or the proof of belief is in the actions taken after you have said it. Some of you will say, uh, this year, this year, Pastor, I will be so rich, I will be so rich. This is February. We are not father to die. This man started proving to be forever living product. Uh, Daddy, what age do you want to die? The father said, what nonsense is that? Why are you asking me that kind of thing? Uh, no, there's nothing. I'm just, I'm just, I just say, let me ask. You know your grandfather died at 80 and you're 75 now. <laughs> I'm just asking. The next time, Daddy, when are you going to write your will? So this boy, are you okay? Why are you always asking me this kind of thing? The third time the guy just opened up. That in short, since you don't want to die, please share this thing. Share this thing. The guy must be a PDP member. Share this thing. Share, 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 share. The man said, Are you okay? I'm still here. He said, Whether you are here or not, just give me what belongs to me so that I will go and find my life. The father said, Okay. You have the estate here. You have this here. You have that here. The guy sold it, everything. Carried his one billion and took off. Went into a far country and was enjoying and living what the Bible called a riotous life. Clubbing from one club to another. Enjoying himself. And by the time the enjoyment ended, what happened? He started feeding pigs and eating from it. He continued in it until one day he didn't speak to a neighbor because he didn't have a neighbor. He didn't speak to friends because friends had gone. He spoke to himself. He said, what am I doing? The Bible says that he came to his senses. What am I doing here? Okay. How many servants are there in my father's house? He said, I will arise. So rising is in your hand. I will arise. I will go to my father. I will say to him. Immediately, he took a French leave. He didn't even tell the owner of the pigs that I'm leaving. He just carried any available rag he had and walked away. But while he was walking away to home, the father was what? Waiting. God is waiting. Speak right and act right. God is waiting. Speak right and act right. God is waiting. The father embraced him. Killed the father's cow. Called an emergency party. It's only a rich man that can call an emergency party and people will come. And he was enjoying himself. 
in case you have forgotten, this is not just the life of humans. It's the life of God. It's the life of God. God, in the many verses of the scripture, spoke to himself. Genesis 1, 26. He said to himself, let us make man. Let us make man. We cannot enter into this environment being who we are, but we need a representative there called man. Let us make man. In our image, they made man. Man was as a result of God speaking to himself. In Genesis eleven seven, the people gathered together and began to build the Tower of Babel. By the time they were building the tower and the city, God spoke to himself, let us come down and see. And they came down and saw. And they said, the people is one. For the first time, heaven spoke bad English. The people is one. If we allow them, they will achieve it. Nothing can stop them. Why? The people say, come, let us bomb bricks. Let us make a city. They believed in what they said, and they began to execute it. Today, the location of heaven's gate would have been somewhere in the Middle East. And all of us would have been heading there, not America. Because if you climb the stairs long enough, <laughs> you are gone. Your rapture has taken place. But God said no. God spoke to himself. Let us go down and stop the people. How do they stop them? They did not stop them by beating them. They did not stop them by causing problems. What they did is that they touched that their powerful weapon. Their tongue. So they can't speak in alignment anymore. When a man is speaking outside the alignment of destiny, you can't amount to nothing. I will make it. Because my father said I won't make it. Uh, my great-grandfather didn't make it. That's why I didn't make it. I'm even happy that the level I am now, driving this small keke, I am happy. In fact, God has tried for me. You will be there. In fact, brother, the way it is going, eh? do you know my father married 12 wives? My grandfather married 50 wives. And uh, my younger brother is married to two wives. And my wife is complaining that I'm chasing women. It's in our blood, though. <laughs> Blood is powerful, but words are more powerful. Tell yourself enough. What held them down will not hold me down. What stopped them will not stop me. The places they couldn't access, I will access it. My father went to Poland because he was privileged to serve Nigeria Coal Corporation at this time as an engineer. He was trained in Poland. But that was the last, the first and last country he visited until he died. Pastor Kosfini, don't work out. I didn't say, okay, since my father went to Poland, maybe I will go to Ireland. Speak what you want. Walk towards what you have spoken. You can be the owner of the biggest mall in Delta State. If you so speak and walk towards it. Because your words empower your life. Your words empower your destiny. I am not among the people that are surprised of where they are. I am not surprised. I am still speaking to you. Whereas I appreciate God for where he has brought me. But I am not surprised. Because I have been in alignment with my words since. My wife is here. My friends who knew me before now, now, they're everywhere. They will tell you, I will always say it, I will not be poor. I can't die a poor man. It is not possible. I will be traveling as though I'm going to the backyard. I've been saying it. When I went to the first interview with Nigeria, um, British Embassy, I had 34,740 Naira as my salary. 34,714 naira. That's what I presented. They stamped it. They didn't stamp it because it was enough. They stamped it because somebody has been speaking into the destiny. I went to America. The same thing. 34,000 something. Somebody said, let's, let's fortify your account. I said, you don't need to. 
Let's make the account, you know, so that when they see the account, let me tell you, the people you even try to do that for know that you're a thief and you can do it. I didn't do it. But there is something I did. I can't be refused. I can't be rejected. I will be anywhere I want to be. Life will not reject me. Life won't refuse me. I will enjoy in this life. But let me tell you, it's not all about enjoyment. It's all about fulfilling purpose. So learn to begin to speak. If your, emotion, if your emotion has been wounded, if your life has been messed up, if everything around you is crumbling down, sit yourself down and start speaking good about your life. My husband will not die. I don't care the situation of the man. My husband will not die. He will live to fulfill destiny. At 80 and 90, we will still be together. He will not go anywhere. My child is intelligent. Chioma, you are intelligent. Intelligent. Emeka, you are speak. So don't keep your mouth short. A mouth that is short is a life that is short. Short mouth is a short life. This year, learn to speak. This house, this hall will be too small to contain us. Before the end of the year, there will be an expansion to this hall. I have seen it in the eyes of faith. And we are walking towards it. Because whatever I hear you say, that's the Bible. Whatsoever I hear you say, the same I will do unto you. What have you been saying lately? Things are not going on well. My life is a mess. Do you know that Emeka later didn't marry me? I'm not even sure of Obi. Obi won't marry you. Because if you're not sure, it won't happen. But if you tell yourself no, Lord, I attract goodness. I attract mercy. I attract favor. I attract breakthrough. The next man that will come into my life will take me to the altar. He will be called Mr. Right. And the man will come. But you must walk towards the things that you have spoken about. Live by your words. Whatever God hears you say, he will do. What are you saying, sister? What are you saying, brother? It'd be like say I go begin go village. I no go feel pay rent for Saba again. It'd be like say I go relocate to Agbo. As Saba is becoming expensive, my dear Agbo will soon become expensive. Then you move to Agbo Obi. <laughs> Agbo Obi will become expensive. You will move <laughs> more. In fact, life will be chasing you, chasing you until you get to the place where nobody knows your origin. Because you have lived everywhere and gathered every culture and you have no culture. No. Asaba, no matter how expensive you are, I will never.